Anabolic Academy. Here we are again. It's already Monday night is when I record Anabolic Academy every week here on Serious and Silliness YouTube. So if this is your first time coming in to Serious and Silliness YouTube bodybuilding channel, then what is Anabolic Academy? Well, what it is, is you ask me questions about bodybuilding, about fitness, about whatever it is you'd like to ask me. But how can you reach me? You can reach me at Instagram, Serious and Silliness, Facebook, John Olivia, TikTok, John Olivia, my email, John underscore Olivia at Yahoo dot com or uncle john 1201 at gmail.com now we only have four questions this week but those four questions are from you guessed it fran is the man because fran is the man anyway his first question because we're just going to jump right into it and then i'm going to give you a preview of what's coming soon his question number one is any supplements recommended for sleep aid. Okay, well, I know I don't have, I'm going to give you my honest opinion, okay? Because I don't have a horse in the race. I don't have a sponsor or anything like that, okay? I have used my friend Jason Onza's Dream Chaser, and it's I Prevail Sups. So you get it on www.i-prevailsupplements.com. It's about $50. And it is a powder you put into some uh, water, you drink it, it comes in several different flavors, and it does help. It does. Within the first 20 minutes or so, you really start getting drowsy, and it helps you sleep through the night. I would also throw some mel. Actually, I think there might be melatonin in it, but I always take a, a melatonin as well because that helps you sleep through the night. And what's great about Dream Chaser from I Prevail Subs is that you don't wake up like groggy like if you take a xanax or an ambien you wake up like oh like you feel like a zombie you know you um with this basically you get a really good night's sleep right and then you wake up refreshed now it's not gonna knock you out like a xanax or an ambient don't get me wrong right it's just gonna help you sleep better so on the natural market line that is what i would use dream chaser i prevail sups uh, go get it. The website is www.i-prevailsups.com. I'll put it in the link below so you guys could just click and go. And it's called Dream Chaser. And it does it does work pretty good. I've used it before. I even gave it to my brother because he had trouble sleeping. And I don't know if he's still using it or not. I gave it to him a while ago. But whatever. It doesn't matter. All right. Question two from Fran is the man. Any tips on how to stop binge eating when you have cravings for junk food? Yeah. Here's the tip. Don't fucking eat the junk food. Like, have some discipline. That's what it's about. Nothing. I am never going to say, take this, take that, do this, do that to stop you from eating junk food. Because if you don't have the discipline to just keep away from junk food, then you're not going to have the discipline to be a bodybuilder. I mean, that's just, I mean, it's just ridiculous. These people that jump on the bandwagon and are using the Ozempic. Look, I mean, I understand that it's more difficult for people than, than others, but my pet peeve with this Ozempic crap is that it literally cuts your appetite. So you literally don't have to do anything. You just take it and it stops you from wanting to eat. So you don't even have to have discipline and it drives me Nuts, because everybody wants the quick fix. And in the long run, this drug is relatively new. We really don't know what kind of side effects there are. Now you're going to say, oh, you know, John, you're a, you're a hypocrite. You talk about anabolics all the time and growth hormone. Yeah, but there is decades of research done on growth, testosterone, any other anabolics that you could possibly use. And it's out there and you could see it and you could do your own research and make up your own mind. But... The only thing I will say is if you are hungry because you're not eating enough, then make sure you eat enough. The worst thing that you could do is not eat enough and then grab junk food because you're hungry. Make sure your meals are prepped. Make sure you're taking in the, the proper amount of calories that you need. Make sure you get all your mac macronutrients in your meals. Odds are you will not crave junk food. Now, if you have a bad sweet tooth or whatnot, and you just like junk food, just have discipline and don't eat it. That's all I could tell you. I really, now don't get me wrong. 
I jump off the wagon, okay? I usually plan one night a week where I eat something, whether I go out to eat or we order food in, we watch a movie, whatever the case may be, and I eat a cheeseburger or ice cream, whatever. I do that once a week. And then the next day, I'm right back to, to normal, okay? So it kind of like keeps me sane, if you will. But if you like binge eat junk food and you want to do this kind of every day and you can't stop yourself, I don't know what to tell you. You need discipline. Go join the Marines or something. I don't know. I really, really don't know. Anyway. Next question from Fon is the man. This is question number three. Okay. If you made a comeback on the bodybuilding stage, which will never happen, what would your posing music be? Anytime I did a bodybuilding show, I always went to a local DJ. You know, I remember the first one, it was this kid from Staten Island. And he was, I think he was, I think he was Albanian. And he used to DJ at the clubs and stuff like that. And I paid him to put like a 60 second track of the modern music back then. And I, I did the same thing with the next uh, three uh, music tracks that I used for bodybuilding. Well, I went to a local DJ and there was a friend of mine that he actually passed away. who did my last one. His name was uh, Jesus Christ. He was my supervisor and he passed away, but he put together a really good one because he used the, the the Bane voice from Batman uh, when Tom Hardy was Batman. And he put that together with like some upbeat music. And it was really, really, uh, really, really cool. Cornell, his name was Cornell, sorry. And it was really, really cool. Cornell was a great guy, man. May he rest in peace. Hopefully, you know, this is going back a few years that he passed. But he was a he would DJ at like, you know, clubs and bars and whatnot. And he put it together for me. It was actually really cool. So that's what I would do, but it was it would always be music that got the audience hyped or or excited. I I can't, I can't stand when bodybuilders go on with this slow music and it's just all and that. Like I know it's easy to pose to slow music, but it does nothing for the audience. And most of the time, when you when you're posing for a that sixty seconds, uh, your posing routine, they're not judging you. It's it's entertainment, really. Uh, so, you know, the posing rounds are where they judge you. So just have some fun, get some music, go up there and pose, get the crowd into it. You know, I would always want something like hard and heavy. If I had to do something now, I would probably do some like old school hip hop from like the late nineties, early two thousands. I put it in a, a mix with some kind of like a uh, voiceover, uh, something to that effect. And I would make a local DJ do it. And I would pay him whatever he wanted, you know, and that's what I would normally do. I, I can't stand when bodybuilders come out to the slow music and it's everything is it's just posing and it's real slow. And it's like they look like ballet ballerinas. And it's like, hey, you're not a ballerina, you're a bodybuilder. Get in there, pose, get the crowd going. This is, you know, you're supposed to be the biggest, baddest motherfucker on that stage. And whatever. It is what it is. But uh, yeah, I would like to see more bodybuilders do that. Every time I see a bodybuilding routine, it's always this slow, methodical crap. But that's, I would pick that. That's what I would do. I would get a DJ, put some probably old school hip hop, you know, maybe some Wu-Tang or Jay-Z or I don't know, maybe even go as far as like Eric B and Rakim, something like that. Put it together and uh, get the crowd going. All right. Next question from Fran is the man. It's actually the last question. But which bodybuilder would you train legs with if you had the choice? Tom Platts, Ronnie Coleman, Dorian Yates, or Branch Warren? Branch Warren, eight days a week. Branch Warren was my favorite bodybuilder. And I'll tell you why Branch, um, from not from not, uh, bleh, I'll tell you why Branch is my favorite, not. Ronnie Coleman, not Tom Platts, and not Dorian Yates. Dorian Yates was a little bit before my time, but I put Dorian and Branch in the same category. Branch, not that Dorian was before my time. Dorian was during my high school days, and maybe, yeah, during my high school days into like, you know, when I was like a freshman in college and whatnot. Um, and I really started following bodybuilding seriously in my early 20s. I was always a fan of bodybuilding. I always looked at the, the magazines. I always knew who the guys were, but I got really serious into my early 20s when Ronnie Coleman was Mr. Olympia. 
The reason why I'd want Branch Warren is I, I truly feel one Dorian Yates was didn't have this influence over me like Branch did, right? But Tom Platt's legs were he was gifted with his legs. I'm not saying that they didn't train hard or anything like that, but he was very gifted. Ronnie Coleman was the most gifted bodybuilder on the face of the earth. I mean, the guy could look at weights and grow. Same thing with Tom Platt's with his legs. Branch and Dorian are in this category where they have good genetics, but they didn't have the best genetics. So their work ethic had to take them past that. Whereas when you got a guy with Ronnie Coleman who had the best genetics, like less than 1% of the population has his genetics, and you put that work ethic into it, it becomes the greatest in the world. But guys like Dorian and Branch had good genetics, and they had to use that work ethic to get them past mediocrity and into the elite category of bodybuilding. And the reason why I would pick Branch is because Branch just influenced me. When I started getting into bodybuilding again, into my 30s, I mean, competitive bodybuilding, he was the big name, and YouTube was a thing, and you used to watch him train legs, and you just got pumped. So I would train any body part with Branch Warren. That would be like a dream come true for me if he would let me. So Branch, if you're watching, which I know you're not, uh, if there's an open invitation to Metroflex, maybe, you know, work out a little bit together. I might throw up or pass out. I have a heart attack, but I'm willing to do it if it's brand if it's branch warrant in Metroflex. So that is who I would train with. That's all there's a lot of guys, you know. King Kamali would be great to train with. Branch Warren. Oh, and it would just see if I could keep up. Because you, you know, you're talking about guys like Branch, Dorian, King Kamali. I'm talking about work ethic, right? I mean in in the road to the Olympia, they used to have the road to the Olympia in every every year. They still do, right? You could follow them, but I don't think they call it the road to the Olympia. We could follow these guys and you'd buy the DVD and they would, you know, you would see leading up to the Olympia in the late 90s, early 2000s. There's one with King Kamali and he's like two weeks out and the guy is still rack pulling seven plates at two weeks out. The guy would train like a beast. So did Branch, so did Dorian, so did Ronnie Coleman, so did Tom Platt's. You know, uh, but there were guys that were genetically gifted. And no matter what they did, like a Kevin Lavrone or a Flex Wheeler or a Lee Priest, a Sean Ray, these guys were going to grow no matter what. That that this is what they were going to do. So I always admired the hard workers. Once I got really in depth of bodybuilding, like who really trained hard because I didn't have great genetics. I had decent genetics, you know, decent enough to win a local show. I didn't have the best genetics in the world. Right. But uh, that would be my choice. Anyway, that is it for Anabolic Academy this week. We have muscle talk coming up. We have what shows coming up this weekend. The Big Man Portugal, I believe. Yes, the Big Man Portugal is coming up. And we will be doing a wrap-up of that, a review of that. I believe Bonac is doing that. I Who else? Nathan D'Asher is doing that show, pretty sure. Should be a pretty stacked lineup. And then after that, you got the Dubai Pro, and that's going to be pretty good because uh, they're, they're shelling out hundred grand to the winner of that show. So big money, big money. All right, guys, listen, like, share, subscribe, tell all your friends about Serious and Silliness Bodybuilding on YouTube, giving you the best bodybuilding content on YouTube. All right, later, fellas. Peace.